This video is about Biddy Early, an Irish mystic healer and legend. The video was created, directed, and presented by Reverend Dr. Dickie Joe Mullen. This is astrologer, parapsychologist, and paranormal investigator Dickie Joe Mullen coming to you from downtown Orlando with dreams and fantasies of Ireland, my family background. In Ireland, there is a broken down cottage. It's still there in County Clare, near the village of Fakel. And it's well known. People have tried to make a tourist destination out of it. Maybe they will sometime. But it's traditionally been known as the cottage of Biddy Early. Biddy was, of course, the most popular lady's name in Ireland, a shortened virgin, version of Bridget, and Biddy was actually Bridget Ellen O'Connor. Visitors to the sleepy village of Fakel in County Clare in search of Biddy early find only that ruined cottage now at the end of their quest. There are no signs, at least not currently, there have been over the years, no souvenirs or postcards for sale in the village. Even a gravestone um, doesn't mark the birth of who's possibly been the most famous woman in Ireland. Mentioned in the poetry of W.B. Yeats as the wisest of women, Biddy was renowned far and wide during her day for her ability to locate lost cows, to um, oversee who was stealing someone's sheep, and to see who was in love with whom and who would have any money. She's been described by Dr. Nancy Schmitz as a wise woman, a type of go-between between the world of the supernatural or the fey ones, the little people, and our boring, everyday, waking world. Biddy Early was someone who was the proper sphere and the people's community, according to Dr. Schmitz, a lecturer in folklore at the University of Quebec. And she was able to counter the results of spells cast on you by your neighbor if you'd offended someone and gotten the evil eye, or if there was any fairy mischief afoot. Biddy always knew what to do. And she was written about in a book called The Irish Wise Woman, The Journal of Folklore, published in 1977. Bridget, or Biddy Ellen O'Connor, was born into a poor family in County Clare in 1798. She was slight, had green-blue eyes, a fresh complexion, and dark auburn hair as a teenager, and she was regarded as a beauty in the beginning. Her mother had a reputation um, for being a healer, and Biddy's daily task was to go through the fields around the home to find berries and herbs that were used during her mother's healing rituals. Um, Biddy's favorite sport was to stand near a hawthorn bush and talk to the fairies. This was a place where the fairies lived, and eventually they began to share their knowledge with her. Biddy's parents died within a few months of each other when she was only 16 years old, and her mother was said to have reappeared to her in a prophetic dream. And this was to tell that Biddy would acquire a blue bottle, and with that she could see things and do good for people. Mystic gifts passed on to a family from one generation to another seem to be a theme in Irish families to this day. Possibly because she believed the gifts were handed from her mother, or were they real, young Biddy took her mother's maiden name early, E-A-R-L-Y, and like early in the morning, and retained it through her subsequent marriages. After the deaths of her parents, she stayed with relatives briefly and subsequently got a job as a domestic 
as a kind of a live-in maid at the estate of a Mr. Shathy near Carleen, Ireland. Here she was taught to read by a fellow laborer, and she pursued her exploration of the meanings of herbs in the few books that were available to her. She was quite a lady, because to have gotten that far as a 16-year-old orphan in 18th century Ireland was quite a feat. Biddy's reputation as a prophet began when her landlord, Sheehy, raised the rent on all of his tenants once too often. When he came around to evict people, um, Biddy went around and cursed him and said that her, her, her bones shall not be found, his bones shall not be found to receive a Christian burial. And after that, um, he, his house was burned down and his remains were not found. Um, if it was mischief, the fairies did it because none of the locals were convicted. At a local fair, Biddy then met an older man, Pat O'Malley, who offered her a job as his housekeeper, and then eventually married her in the parish church. She managed the three-room thatched cabin and raised chickens and took eggs and butter to the local market and continued to make herbal remedies for friends and neighbors. She did all this out of the goodness of her heart. She thought no fame or personal gain, didn't even charge anyone. An old tradition in Ireland says that her powers would be stripped from any healer who demanded payment. I think my own grandmother Esther believed that because she would never accept any payment, although she did seances and little horoscopes for people growing up. Anyway, um, Biddy never did ask for any money. She just was the recipient of a lot of groceries and a lot of poteen. That's an old name for whiskey. She always liked that. Also, um, she would like home-baked bread, anything that she could use, she would accept that. Biddy would always present her caller with a potion in a bottle, and many of the poteen-filled bottles carried away by vi Biddy's visitors were tucked away into walls and cupboards or even buried because they were supposed to be good luck. Biddy, aside from her psychic skills and her handsome good looks, was in her own way a mysterious magic bottle. Uh, there's several different accounts of what she really did in terms of using an actual bottle. Her most prized possession was said to be a blue bottle, similar to this one, and in that she would have a liquid and she would gaze into it and would see visions. And when she died, the bottle disappeared. Some say the fairies took it. Some say she gave it to the local priest, and he either threw it into the lake, or he kept it for himself. Who's to say? At any rate, Biddy lived to be quite an elderly lady, an elderly Biddy. She might have looked something like this toward the end. And when people became sick and their tendency was to go to Biddy first because she didn't charge instead of to a doctor, eventually she got into a bit of trouble and turmoil. Um, she suffered a minor setback in 1865 when she was charged under a statute from 1586 about taking place um, in part in witchcraft ceremonies. And she was driven away, um, dressed in her homespuns and in a frilly white bonnet by her husband. But witnesses who had agreed to give evidence against her were frightened away from the trial. So the case against her was dismissed for lack of evidence. By 1868, Biddy had had three husbands, outlived all of them, and her last husband was a very young man from Limerick with the name of O'Brien. And he came to her sick. Biddy thought he was kind of cute anyway. So she said, if I cure you, will you marry me? So he agreed. She did cure him, and he did marry her. And five years later, Biddy died. She was close to 80 years old, which was quite elderly um, for a lifespan in Ireland at that time. And 
I have taken some blue bottles from my own family's uh, larder and decorated them in honor of Biddy, just as gifts to friends. And no one knew what the brown herbal liquid was that she had inside, but I made some up um, that represent probably what she used. This is called luster water. It's a traditional magical and spiritual tea made from mugwort and vervain. It can be brewed as a tea or put into a glass and brewed and you could make it yourself. Vervain and mugwort. Verbena also will work because that's another variety. Equal amounts and either drink it, it's perfectly harmless, it'll give visions, or gaze into a blue bottle, maybe like this one, if your own grandmother left you one, or you can find one in an antique shop, and just see if you can invoke the spirit of Biddy, Biddy Early. The last of those fairy sibyls who pretended acquaintance with the mystical lore of the spirit was the far-famed Biddy Early. The people held an emphatic belief in her powers, and numberless are the stories told about the wonderful cures she performed. So if you get near County Clare in Ireland, you might want to go by the remains of Biddy's cottage. As I understand it, you can walk right inside, and there are all sorts of treasures there that people have left in honor of her stones and crystals and bottles and chains of beads and coins from all around the world, still invoking her favor. It's kind of like a visit to Marie Laveau's tomb in New Orleans. And you can see whether she's able to come across space and time and remove any curses or any barriers that are keeping you away from the brightest, best, and most magical of your life. And here's to Biddy Early, a little drink of poteen. Well, it's empty. We'll have to make it a symbolic drink. And this is pilgrimage traveler and spiritualist Dickie Jo Mullen wishing you hail and good times. Slante from Orlando, Florida.